So today I wanted to take a look at some of the craziness going on. There are a lot of communists and socialists on TikTok. I want to take a look at those. And also I want to review some communism slogans, which I think are very important uh, to realize just how flawed the ideology is. And yeah. Um, it's about Southern socialism. So this is to raise awareness that, you know, there are leftist movements. The fact that we're having so many people in Gen Z identifying as socialists and communists shows just how much we failed teaching students the dangers of communism and socialism. And just how many people were starved to death and the mass murder of millions of people. I mean, take a look at the Soviet Union, for example, when they were a socialist society, 18 million people were incarcerated in the gulag. Why? Well, the person could have been a criminal or they could have spoken out against the government. And that's great for the government because then they get free labor from these prisoners. We can take a look at the polls and we'll see that over half of Gen Z hate capitalism, distrust the government, and support socialism, which is very funny because how can you simultaneously distrust the government but advocate for socialism. I mean, the whole idea in socialism is that the government is going to regulate everything. They're gonna distribute the wealth. They're gonna take care of healthcare. How does that work? But before we get into this, guys, please make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you don't miss my videos. So let's start with a very famous video. This is a kid who is talking about why we need communism. When it was founded, we still need communism. Communism. If I were to ever start a country with a communist government, wink, wink, wait 12 years. Um, poor people, sh we really can't have poor people. It's not good for a bunch of, for like a whole class of people to be poor. People need money. And secondly, some people might say, oh, we have welfare. Welfare just promotes lazy people. I actually agree with him there. And I don't know, I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure welfare, especially down in the United States, costs a bit of moolah. So yeah, all those morons saying that communism is the same as welfare, you can go leave because you are just an absolute moron. Just look up the definition of that. I'm sorry I got a little heated, but when people say it's the same as welfare, I get really angry. Anyway, yeah, that's why we still need communism. I can't say that he convinced me, but we'll keep looking. And a lot of these Gen Z people are into communism because they hate capitalism. Capitalism is so, so very evil. And it's the root cause of every issue that you experience. And I thought we would take a look at some of these TikToks um, explaining why that is. That's so funny that you're saying you're gonna be a slave to capitalism, but you wouldn't be a slave in a communist society or a socialist society because communism can't actually be achieved. Uh, but let's talk about that. Take a look at your job, for example. In a capitalist society, you have the choice to pick a career. And if you were in a socialist society, you wouldn't have that choice. If you were back in the Soviet Union, right, they would tell you what job you're doing. There's no discussion. You go to school for free, they pay for that, but then you have to repay them, not with money, but by listening to them and obeying and doing what they ask you to. So for example, if there's a shortage of doctors in Siberia, guess where you're going? You're going to be a doctor in Siberia. And until that debt is paid off, maybe that's five years, maybe that's seven years, you're not coming back home. Forget about starting your own business. There's no free enterprise, right? In the Soviet Union, for example, if you even attempted to do that, you would be sent to a labor camp. Let's continue. Like many young adults, I used to think that my goal in life was to be happy and healthy. That is until I discovered capitalism. Now, my only goal is to constantly prove my worth to other people. With capitalism, my self-worth is directly tied to my productivity. And so I have transcended from just a human being to a human doing. <laughs> just a human being? Is your worth not in your productivity? Where is your worth coming from then? Sitting at home, sipping your iced latte that you were able to buy because of a job, presumably, or money from your parents, um, probably more likely in this case. But uh, what do you mean? What, what, where is your worth gonna come from then? 
seriously, where are you going to get fulfillment if not a job? Are you just gonna, do you want to just sit at home all day? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> Amazing. Capitalism <laughs> is not just an economic and political system anymore. It's also a lifestyle. Get on with it. Hashtag internalized capitalism. Capitalism is so hot that I just can't fight this feeling that no matter what I do, it's just never gonna be enough. <laughs> no, that is your mental health problems. That's not capitalism's fault, honey. Start subscribing to capitalism today. You can also get consumerism, hustle culture, hyper individualistic culture, and if you're lucky, feeling dead inside. Again, that is your own personal issue that you're dealing with. And don't forget, worker exploitation. Worker exploitation. You're not gonna experience that in socialism? Y'all are funny. Socialism is not free 99, but you know what is? The illusion of choice. So what are you waiting for? Never rest without feeling guilty ever again and start subscribing to capitalism today. Today! There's also this very strange TikTok. Take a look. Honestly, if that did happen, that person he was going to hook up with did dodge a bullet for sure. Um, so yeah, capitalism is the root cause of all your problems. That's interesting. I mean, just take a look at the people that live through communism, for example. I mean, did that really work out well for them? You have to be a hardworking and creative individual to get money, right? And these people are so upset about the fact that they have to work hard to earn money that they're blaming capitalism for all the problems in the world. Can you imagine blaming every issue ever on capitalism? The same system that lets you choose a job, work hard and get money instead of being paid the same amount as someone else doing some work that's way, way less strenuous than yours. If you work hard, you can get that luxury life that you want. And then if you're a good person, you can donate some of your money to hospitals, to schools. A lot of rich people do that. But no, instead you wanna cry and complain about how it's really hard and capitalism is evil. I mean, you're taking your freedom to choose an occupation for granted, right? Because in a socialist society, you wouldn't have that freedom. There would be a body of government who would tell you and assign you a job. Guess what? You can't change your job without consent from that authority, which led to a lot of corruption, like bribery. And what a lot of these young socialists like to do is they'll like to bring up the example of Sweden or other Nordic countries that are quote unquote socialists. Um, but they have a lot of capitalism in their country and they don't talk about that. But capitalism is so evil, right? They're not a purely socialist society. And then we have the Democrat socialists like AOC for example telling us to eat the rich while the rich actually have to work to become rich and you know they have to be creative people they have to work hard in the free market that capitalism provides them um, but to the socialists well, rich people are evil meanwhile the rich are the ones creating companies and therefore providing jobs for a lot of people now let's take a look at some of the Soviet Union um, slogans that they had for communism. This one is fairly simple and straight to the point. It says, Кто не работает, тот не ест. And what that means is, those who do not work, they don't eat. People in America here who are saying they are communists, uh, if they don't want to work, they get welfare. If they were in the Soviet Union though, if they and didn't work, uh, they wouldn't eat. Yeah, th there was no welfare. And as that genius child pointed out, welfare and communism, um, it's not the same. It's not the same. You wouldn't get welfare in, in a communist society. So here we have this young girl and it says, Partia сказала nada, комсомол ответил есть. На поля, на стройки. And what that translates to in English is whatever the communist party has planned, the people have to follow. And you can see the girl uh, going to do whatever the communist party has asked her to do. I'd say, yes, sir, and you go. Or again, you would be sent to the labor camps. Here we see a woman with a pail of milk, I'm assuming. It says, Dagonim Sesha po производству мяса, молока и масла на душу населения. And what she's saying is that we will be better than the US, right? We are going to catch up to them with all of these products, uh, which never happened right? Didn't, didn't happen. <laughs> it says planly party, planly naroda. And what that is, is the plan of the communist party is the plan of the people. Uh, again, there's no choice. You do what the government tells you. Another issue with communism is that it assumes that people uh, don't get greedy and that they're always going to help each other. Uh, for example, if someone isn't working, it's, you know, assumed that their neighbor will help them out. 
Um, no, it's actually in human nature, unfortunately, a lot of the time to be greedy. That's why it has always failed. Um, corruption happens. As humans, it's actually innate for us to want to be better and to be competitive, uh, some more than others, but you can't get rid of that. People actually have ambitions, and if you are in a communist society, there's no motivation. Uh, there's nowhere uh, to rise. And if you didn't want to work, you would be a goner. Meanwhile, here in America, if you don't want to work, you can get food stamps, you can get Medicaid, get all of this uh, stimulus checks from the government, and that promotes laziness, right? Welfare. So it, it would not be like that in a communist society. I mean, you could take a look what happened after Biden sent out all those stimulus checks, right? People got really lazy. No one wanted to go back to work, and that's what these people want. They want to sit at home. It's important to know there has never been a true communist society. There's always been uh, socialism, and it, there's a promise of communism, but it's just not attainable. And the funny thing is, a lot of these people are saying, oh yeah, but socialism and communism, it would be really fair, it would be really moral. Uh, meanwhile, let's take a look at the Soviet Union again, right? All of the officials were saying, yes, you're equal, but we're more equal. And that's why we deserve the best, you know, cars, to live in the best cities, uh, because we're your servants, like we're serving you, the people. People used to have to go to the university, it would be paid for, and the actual uh, standard of learning there was really good. So the, um, the people from the Soviet Union that came to America who escaped, uh, they were very well-educated individuals. But the problem with that is, again, you had no choice in what job you were going to do. And if you didn't want to go to university, then you had to do some like manual labor. And uh, where are you going to go from there, right? There's no ladder to climb. And a lot of people resorted to uh, alcoholism. I mean, the government even controlled who could leave the country. You, it was basically a closed society. People couldn't leave unless they were super, super famous, like artists or something. And then the government wanted to show the rest of the world, oh, look, we have all these uh, amazing uh, famous people. And yeah, the government would closely watch who would leave. Um, but if you just wanted to go, it, it wasn't like that. You had to get permission. Let's take a look now at some of the modern photos uh, of these people protesting and um, showing their communist and socialist pride. Very interesting, let's take a look. <laughs> okay, so this one uh, says youth unite. Same struggle, same fight. Uh, there's some other awesome signs here, no pride in policing. Back there it says gay cops are traitors. Uh, communists for queer liberation. And finally, uh, something world is necessary, socialism with a, a rainbow in the back, right? Um, gay pride. Wow. The, these people are so ignorant. Historically, you know what would happen to minorities in like a pure socialist uh, society or communist society? Uh, there would be no freedom of the minority. What are you talking about? The gay people, they were sent to the gulag. I, I don't know what these people are thinking. They were shot or sent to prison and they're coming out here with rainbow flags and communism. This is simply nothing more than spoiled children, literally. <laughs> Here's another one. Um, Marxist Student Federation. Join the struggle against capitalism. Oh, the struggle. The struggle against capitalism. Free education funded by expropriation. Let the ruling class tremble at a communist revolution. What? It's fantastic. You're telling me that USA has been fighting communism and now we're promoting it in our own country? Democratic socialism, capitalism has failed us. Bernie with a heart. Okay. Yeah, that's great. I remember a few people in my university were like, oh my gosh, I love Bernie. I wish he, I wish he had one. I'm like, you know, he's a socialist, right? I'm like, yeah, that's, that's why I love him. Oh my gosh. Like, if you want to sacrifice your freedom, like freedom of speech, to speak out against the government, okay, interesting. Fight for socialism and LGBTQ liberation. Why don't these people just look at Cuba? Look at what socialism is doing and all of the murders and people not even being able to get uh, medicine. Like, why don't you literally take a trip there and think about what you're advocating for? DeSantis actually signed a bill, I think about a year ago, to require the schools to be teaching the dangers of communism. And I agree with him so much because he must also be seeing this and is scared, uh, rightfully so, because 
these people have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea what they're advocating for, and they're just blindly following along with what others are saying. So yeah, I think that's one of the best things that we should be doing right now is putting more effort into teaching students about the dangers of communism and socialism and how it, uh, communism especially just simply does not work. That's all for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed and I hope you will subscribe, click the notification bell and like this video to see more of my videos. And yeah, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.